Howdy everyone, Fortunekins here with Cecily the Golden Retriever and Jen the Grey Wolf. Recently I've been washing a lot of my webkins. For those of you that don't know... You guys want to see something funny? Oh, who got their car broken into? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> it's gone! It's all gone! Fuck! Why me? running its wild, possibly diseased, mousy self all over my webkins. In fact, just now I went out there and found the mouse in my webkins bin, and yeah, I moved them, so I'm gonna have to be washing them as quick as possible. And I had had a few people ask me about my method that I use for washing my webkins, so I thought that I would make a little tutorial video, as I found, uh, I've kind of perfected this method. I've combined a bunch of different things that I've learned washing webkins over the years, and basically this method works almost perfectly. Uh, I've been able to restore webkins to like new condition. If your webkin is missing anything, so like if it's got bald spots or its nose is gone or anything like that, uh, I'm not going to cover anything like that. This is just for making your webkin's fur and appearance like brand new. I'm going to do Jenna first since she's in way worse condition. Um, for this, we're going to learn how to restore a regular Webkinz, specifically a Webkinz with dryer fur, and the standards of the method. If you have a Webkinz that's in bad condition like this, she's possibly diseased, uh, very much dirty, and she has dryer fur. But first of all, hot water. You're going to want it as hot as you can get it, at least for the first round, because um, you're going to want to get all that, like any germs or bacteria living on this that could be potentially carried by that mouse, you're going to want to kill them. Remove any accessories. These, I just let these soak in hot water. Now that your webkin is all wet, you're gonna get your shampoo. I like to squirt it into my hands first rather than directly onto the webkin so that I can spread it a bit farther. Now don't rinse them. You're gonna take the bristle brush and scrub one way and then the other way and do that all over them on their whole body. This will work the soap into the fur so that it really gets in there and cleans them up. foamy and look rather sad like this. Then you can start rinsing. Make sure to squeeze the webkin as hard as you can while you're rinsing so all that soap inside comes out. like that we can already see some difference in her color. Now if you're like me and you're in a situation where your webkin is particularly contaminated and you want a little extra clean, uh, I'll usually do a second round with the soap, but just a little more light, not as much soap and not as much brushing, um, just to make kind of extra sure that, the, that the everything's out. Like I can see there's a bit on her nose of the lavender that the mouse was eating. So you can just go ahead and do a second round. I'll show you the dryer first step. But normally I would do this before I get them wet. 
Uh, I think I forgot because I don't like brushing them while they're mousy like that because the mouse gunk or whatever, it literally like flies up all over the place. So you're gonna take your dog wire brush and basically all the fur is clumped together. That's what dryer fur does. It singes the fur and melts it so that it sticks together. So all you have to do is break it up. You're gonna have to be very aggressive and a lot of fur is probably going to come out. That's normal. It shouldn't affect the look of the webkin. You're gonna wanna lay your webkin down on a flat surface Take your brush and just pressing as hard as you can, brush their fur. First one way, then you turn them around and brush them the other way. Again, as hard as you can. See, it's leaving long grooves on her. You kind of want that. You want, you want to break up as many clumps as possible. I've created a pancake, as you can see. Um, <laughs> this is normal. There wasn't much on the brush, but as you can see, brushing her did leave a lot of residue. There's a lot of hairballs. Um, this is why I washed her while she was, or brushed her while she was wet, is so that this didn't all go flying into my face while she was still mousy. Um, so it's completely normal for a bunch of hair to come off of the webkin. As you can see, she still looks like a wolf, and by the end of the video, you'll see she looks like a better wolf. So that's not a problem. Don't worry about it. So next, you're going to basically just do the exact same thing, but with conditioner this time. Uh, even if your webkin is in really bad or if you think that their fur is really rough, I would not suggest using the conditioner more than once, especially because in order to get the conditioner everywhere on their body, you kind of have to use a lot of it. Once it's fully covered, same thing, brush them all over, back and forth. You want to make sure that all that conditioner gets into the fur all the way to the bottom. If you're kind of impatient with the conditioner, you can kind of do a back and forth motion like this. It kind of gets it in there faster, or at least it's easier to see where you've already been. All right, with that done, final rinse. Make sure you squeeze very hard to make sure everything is out. If there's still conditioner, the water that pours out of her will be a sort of milky color. So just make sure that you get all of it because you don't want that sitting in your webcam. Wow, 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 wow,
With that, your webkin should be all clean and also extremely soggy. You're gonna have to kind of torture them a bit. You know, you're gonna wanna twist them. You wanna like squeeze everything as much as you can. Just get all of that water out of there because the less water that's in this webkin, the better things are gonna be for you. Now you've got a shaggy floppy mess. So we're gonna go ahead and leave the sink now. First things first, towel dry. You're gonna wanna scrub them as much as you can. Rub them real fast like this. It's gonna fling them around a bunch. It's kind of a pain about to keep your hold on them. You can hold them with one hand and like rub them with the other. But either way, you just wanna get as much as you can off them. Right now I'm not going to record this entire process because I like to watch videos while I do it. <laughs> um, but for this, you'll just need a bristle brush and the dryer. You're going to want the dryer on full heat and full setting. While you are drying the webkin, brush them with the bristle brush. This will help get the air in through all of their fur so that they are completely dry. Once your webkin is all dry, you don't feel any more wet spots, you can take your dog wire brush and brush them out. Alright, as a final step, turn your blow dryer all the way to the coldest setting and blow their fur to just kind of fluff it up and make it look nice. Now you can go ahead and put their accessories back on. And there you go. Just like that, your webkin is all clean. Now I will preface this by saying that there is one kind of fur that I haven't tried this on yet, and that is the long fur yes. like the lion's manes um i don't know if i can fix the dryer fur on that um however i have a love lion in storage whose mane is completely flattened it was dryer fur once i get him out of storage i'm going to try this method on him and i will either put in the description or pinned comment whether or not brushing out the mane is a good idea because i think that would be a lot harder to brush out than this kind of fur and here is a before and after pic of jenna and a before and after pick of some other webkins I have used this method on. If your signature has any scratches on its nose or eyes, uh, this is where this is gonna come in. She's mostly okay. There's like one on her eye, I think. You can't really see it on camera. And then her nose is a little scratched. If you need to fix scratches on your webkins, toothpaste. You're gonna wanna do this before you wash them so that you can get it out of their fur. And if they have drier fur, I would actually recommend brushing them before putting the toothpaste on. Um, because the dog wire brush can scratch them up if you're not careful. Put a little bit of toothpaste on your finger and rub it onto their eyes and nose. All right, now that your webkin looks like a creature from the nightmare dimension, um, you're gonna wanna rinse the toothpaste off as you're just getting them wet. Make sure that you rub all around, get all of that, that toothpaste out, like put water directly onto their eye. Oh yeah, that worked on her nose really well, actually. There's no scratches left on there. Now we're gonna take some shampoo put it on our hands um, and rub it on her. Now I did this twice for the webkin that was in worse condition because she had 
a mouse had been crawling all over her and she was really affected. Um, for a webkin like this, that was actually in really decent condition beforehand, she kind of just needed a spruce up, like she's not actually, like her fur is not that bad. Once is absolutely fine. All right, same as before, up and down and all over. And don't worry about the airbrushing. Don't worry about it. If it comes off, it comes off. Scrunkly, it's on a conditioner. Same process, put it on your hands, rub it together, pet the webkin all over. Then again, you take your brush, quick back and forth movements all over again to make sure that the conditioner gets worked into the fur. Now you have an extra scrunkly. <laughs> now you're gonna rinse her out, and again, make sure you squeeze really hard. You know the conditioner's done when the water that falls out is no longer milky white. Now your sopping wet mess is all clean. You're gonna wanna soak out as much of the water as you can. Squeeze it real hard, make sure that you twist, torture them a little bit, get all of that water out. It'll make the drying process a lot easier, especially if you're washing a signature uh, because they have, um, they take a lot longer to dry than regular wet can does. <laughs> And once you've got all the water out, we are done at the sink and we can move on. Now begins the drying process, which takes quite a bit of time on a signature, uh, just because they're bigger and usually a little wider as well. You're just gonna grab them, rub them down. That's a lot better. She does look a bit scraggly, but she's a lot drier now. You're going to need the bristle brush and a blow dryer, maximum heat, maximum power. So you're going to brush her while blow drying so you can get the air down into the fur. Webkin is dry, take a dog wire brush, brush them down. Take 
thick dryer, put to the coldest setting, and blow their fur to give it a little fluff. Now, one of the key factors to making a signature look like it's in brand new condition is the airbrushing that they have when they're first made. Um, you can see it on pretty much all of them, especially it's most noticeable on ones like the Husky and German Shepherd, which have a kind of uh, black line that comes down their muzzle. Um, but it is on most signatures. And honestly, just putting that airbrushing back can make them look so much better. However, most of us don't have access to airbrushing technology. Now, I actually found out about this method from somebody on <laughs> Instagram who told me about it, um, but it's been a total lifesaver. It's helped me make Caspian and Evelyn and Huxley all look like they're in great condition. First thing you're gonna do is look up a stock image of whichever signature you're cleaning. Take note of the airbrushing and what color it is. Then you're gonna to wanna to get a colored pencil in that same color. I know this one probably looks darker. The nice thing about the colored penciling is if it does turn out terrible, you can wash it off. Um, with Caspian in particular, I had to sit there with like a wet rag and just like kind of like rub it off and then put it back on until I got it right. He had particularly difficult airbrushing, but one like this should be pretty straightforward. Golden Retriever actually has a lot of airbrushing. There's sort of an L shape on the ear, uh, the middle of the muzzle, and then there's even some above the eyebrows um, and some on the tail. Uh, so that's going to be kind of a lot. I'm gonna start with kind of an orangey yellow color. And I don't know the science of this, but I have noticed that it's easier to put the marker onto damp fur. This doesn't really change anything. I don't get the fur damp just because uh, if I risk getting it too wet, all it means is that I have to use the marker a little longer. You can pretty much just stick to the top. You don't have to worry about getting underneath too much. Just so long as you get that top layer of fur, it looks pretty much authentic. I have even added some airbrushing wasn't on the original design as far as I could tell like with my Australian Shepherd, which helped her look a lot fresher. I don't know if that's going to make me sound like a heathen in the Webkins community. So there you go, you can already see the, um, the difference there. I haven't tried this with one of the tigers yet, but I noticed that the tiger's stripes are entirely airbrushed on. I feel like that would be a much bigger task. Usually I can do this kind of thing in just a couple minutes, but the tigers I think would take a lot longer to do. And of course, the longer the fur, the harder it's gonna be. So like the nose is really short. It kind of went on pretty quickly. The ear is gonna take a lot longer because the fur here is just, it's, it's longer. It's harder to get the pencil to stick on there. Now it doesn't quite look it on camera, but as you can see, it's a little more orange than I want. Um, in this case, you can either wipe it off or layer it. Like you can get like a darker color or just a different color altogether and just kind of change it. Uh, like I like the way it looks on her ears, but not so much the way it looks on her eyebrows. And there we go. Now I've gotten it to a level that I like, just enough color. The only thing left to do is, uh, I believe there's supposed to be some black around the muzzle. And then there's always on most signatures, there's this like black line on the corner of their eye, which can be kind of hard to see once it fades, like it's hard to know it's even there. Uh, but when it is there, it makes them look really nice. So extending that line out and just making it a bit more pronounced, um, it does make the Webkins look a little bit more feminine, which for a Webkin like Cecily is a good thing because I want her to look a little more like a girl. So I'm okay with that. Um, call me old fashioned, but yeah, I think it does help a little bit. Uh, and I did extend it on both ends, or at least over here, this one dips in a bit, so I think I have to go back over it. And I checked my references. This is supposed to be dark brown, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You always wanna check with this, because most signatures will have airbrushing right on the underneath their nose, but some have it black and some have it brown, so you do have to watch out for that. And yeah, you can see that this one's going on a little too choppy and thick, in which case I just have this rag here. Just get the tip. Just get it on your finger, get the tip wet, and then just wipe it. Um, not only can that help to take it off, but sometimes it can help to just mute the color or even spread it a bit. Go really gently because the harder you press, the more color you're gonna get. I'm like barely going over it and already getting more color than I want. Yeah, that's, kind of, that's definitely more color than I want right there. So again, just take your rag, maybe even shuffle kind of and then wipe it with a dry part of the rag. And yeah, that brought off too much. It's just kind of a back and forth, like you kind of have to play around with it a bit until you get it just how you want it. Now I did get it right where I wanted. 
I ended up layering the color I used on the nose and the eyebrows with a dark brown sort of on top of it. This Webkin is completely done and clean. She looks brand new, like practically right out the store, just without code. She feels amazingly soft. This is a really great method if you want to keep your rare signatures and stuff in good condition. And if you just want to quickly soften up your webkin, this personal brush actually does a really good job of softening them up. And just to give you some example, here are some before and afters of both Cecily and a bunch of other signatures that I've used this method on. that concludes uh, this tutorial. Let me know how it goes for you if you end up using it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.